On average, we make over 3.5 million journeys daily on our buses and trains, taking us to school, work and play. Public transport prices need to stay affordable because it's the main way of getting from point A to B for most people. It is an essential service. Besides, having more accessible and affordable public transport promotes greater economic and social activity. The average price we pay for a public transport journey on bus and train? About $1.10. Flagging down a taxi? The meter starts from $2.80. For the countless trips we've made on our public transport, have you ever wondered exactly how fares are determined? Is it simply a case of supply and demand? What goes on behind the scenes to keep public transport both cost-effective and affordable? The Supply and Demand Diagram Supply and demand determines the price of goods and services and the quantities sold. In a perfectly competitive market, the interaction of demand and supply will determine the market equilibrium price. Each firm in a perfectly competitive market is a price taker and accepts the market determined price. Though perfect competition is an ideal situation, this is often not so in the real world. With more competition and more substitutes available, the price elasticity of demand increases. Demand becomes price elastic, so consumers are more responsive to price changes. So what happens in an oligopolistic market situation with few producers? Public transport markets tend to be oligopolistic in nature, dominated by a few large transport operators, so demand tends to be inelastic and less sensitive to prices. Add to the equation the fact that there aren't any close substitutes to our buses and trains, demand is relatively inelastic. We end up with a situation where operators can potentially wield immense market power, and that means they have the market power to exploit commuters. But if that's the case, why do prices or public transport fares remain relatively low? This is where the government steps in. In Singapore, we have set up the Public Transport Council or PTC as an independent body to regulate transport fares for both buses and trains. The PTC uses a price cap formula to keep fares down. This formula takes into account factors like inflation and wages to compensate operators for structural cost increases in their operating environment. As these are economy-wide indicators and not indicators of the individual operators, there is incentive for operators to keep their costs in check and be more efficient than the economy-wide indicators to extract efficiency gains. The formula also ensures commuters' interests are protected by extracting a productivity component derived from an equal share of operators' past productivity gains. The PTC considers other factors such as the prevailing economic conditions and affordability of public transport fares in its deliberations. It also assesses the return on total assets ROTA, an indicator of profitability of the operators as a reality check to ensure that the operators ROTA values are not excessive and are comparable to other industries with similar risk profiles. This fair cap instills market discipline in public transport operators. Because they can't raise prices to increase revenues beyond the cap, operators need to bring down their own costs to maximize profits. This leads to a push for greater efficiency, which translates to productivity gains. There is one downside to a fair cap though. Operators may be tempted to cut corners to reduce costs, resulting in poor service at our expense. That is why apart from the fair cap, LTA and PTC have in place a regulatory framework of minimum service standards to ensure that service quality is not compromised for profit. But what about taxi rides? Taxis are considered a high-end personalized service. As such, there is less need to regulate them. 
The taxi industry has been largely liberalized since 2003. Market forces now determine its supply and price. Inherently, with less economies of scale and lower entry barriers, the taxi market is subjected to greater competition than the public rail or bus markets. Even though the oligopolistic nature of the industry means smaller companies tend to follow prices set by the dominant player, the competitive market will keep fares in check as prices that are set too high will attract potential entrants into the market to erode away supernormal profits. So the market keeps itself in check. This keeps prices competitive despite the lack of fair regulation. The government's role is limited to facilitating the workings of the market. Now that we have a better understanding of how public transport fares are kept affordable, let's ponder these questions.